Hi, and welcome to this section of the Chemistry Tutor. And in this section, we're going to cover the very important topic of significant figures, or it may be called significant digits in your book. Uh, basically, we're going to be doing a lot of calculations in chemistry. And when you're doing calculations with more than one number, it's really important to look at how accurately each of those numbers in your problem are measured because your final answer really should be how many digits you put in your final answer should really be, be dependent upon what you started with and so I think the easiest way to really illustrate that and why that's important is from a real world example not a chemistry example but just a real world example that we all have some experience with so we'll do that really quickly and then I'll give you the rules of significant figures and then we'll go ahead and do some practice so that you can get the hang of it it's one of those things really that you can memorize rules all day in the book but until you sit down and really practice it and, and count significant figures and get some practice with doing some calculations, you really won't get it until you, you do that. So I want to definitely spend some time at the end giving you that practice. So this gets some motivation for why this is important. Let's say you're going down the road and you're traveling at some speed, right? What speed is that? Let's just take an example from real life. Let's say your speed in a car or a train or something like that is 10.8 two uh, meters per second. This means meters per second. So this means that every single second I am traveling 10.82 meters. So you really need to wrap that in your brain. So another second goes by, another second goes by, another second goes by. Every time a second goes by I have traveled 10.82 meters. So the fact that I actually have a decimal point here um, in other words, I didn't measure this as 10 meters, I didn't measure this as 10.9 meters, I didn't measure this as, you know, 10.82367932 meters, but I measured it as 10.82. And what that means is that I have sort of an implied accuracy to the speed that, I, that I'm really traveling. So the train or the car is really going at some, some speed that's truth. But when I measure it, you know, I have to get a camera out or I have to get a, a yardstick and I have to do my best to judge it. And I only measure it to two digits after the decimal point. That's important. So hold that in the back of your mind. Now let's say that I travel this speed for a time, a time, let's say, and the time that I'm traveling at the speed is 2.65427 seconds. All right, so I'm going down 10.82 down, uh, meters per second, and I'm traveling for 2.65427 seconds. Now, the first thing you should notice is that the, the, the accuracy with which I measured my time is much greater. That means that whatever device I used to measure the time, I was able to put more decimals after the decimal point because it was, it was a more accurate representation of the true time. So I'm going down the road, I go at a certain speed, I measure it the best I can, and this is the best I can measure that guy with the, the measurement tool I have. I click a stopwatch, I see I've gone down the road this many seconds, and I have more decimals because the way that I'm measuring time. Maybe I have a really good clock, clock or something like that. And so I'm able to put more decimals after the decimal point. So let me now ask you a question. If I'm traveling at this speed and I'm traveling for this many seconds, how do I calculate how far I have traveled? Well, if you think about it, change the numbers to something easier. If I'm going one meter per second for five seconds, how far have I gone? Well, I just multiply those two numbers. One meter every single second, but I'm going for five whole seconds. So I multiply those two numbers to give me the distance. How far have I traveled over that time period? So the distance is an example of a calculation that you might actually have to do in real life. Let me change colors here. The distance that I'm going to travel is the velocity times the time, v times t. All right. So if I were going to do that, I would go in my calculator and put 10.82, and I would multiply it by 2.65. Four, two, seven, because this is the distance, I'm sorry, this is the velocity, meters per second, this is the time in seconds, I multiply it. Now, when I do this, what do I get? Now, in the calculator, the calculator will give me the following thing. The calculator will give me 28.7192014 meters. I'm going to put it in brackets so you can sort of see